a small expression from the Quran that is uh, an insight to depression and sadness. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Wala tahinu, wala tahzanu, wa antum alalun in kuntum mu'minin." Don't be, don't feel weak. Don't be weakened. A uh, wahan in Arabic is actually a feeling of uh, not being able to exercise change. In other words, no matter what you do, things aren't changing. Things aren't getting better, or th- your best attempts have failed, and now you feel incapable of succeeding. When one, when that starts settling in, like, oh, my my efforts have failed, or I haven't been able to accomplish, then the next phase, wala tahzanu, and then don't be in a state of grief. Sadness kicks in. You become that that uh, original paralysis, that original you know failure. It then s- uh, leads you right into huzn. So Allah Azza wa Jalla doesn't just say don't be sad. He actually went to the root cause. The root cause was some kind of failure, some kind of disappointment that kind of wore you down, and it started taking away your own confidence, your own belief that you can actually do better. You know, Subhanallah. So Allah Azza wa Jalla, and He did this by the way. One of the places He did this is in the Battle of Uhud, where Muslims suffered amazing amount of loss. An incredible amount of loss, but he turned that loss into something positive. He actually, in the very next ayah, says, "You know, if if you've been injured, then so what? The other side's been injured too. What No, toughen up. These are days that flip between people. You're gonna be, you're gonna have easy days. You're gonna have hard days. Don't let this overwhelm you and just you know beat yourself up. As a matter of fact, huzn is a, a state in which a person is actually torturing themselves. The sadness is when you're beating yourself up. A situation beat you up, and now you allowed yourself to get beat up on top of that. Allah says, don't put yourself in that position. وَأَنْتُمُ الْعَلَوْنَ كُنْتُمْ Meaning, you're going to be in the supreme position so long as you're, you're, totally, you're total believers. In other words, these situations, they come and go. But Allah is a constant. You never lost Allah. The one treasure that you don't, you know, once you lose that, you lose everything. And when you have that, nothing else counts. Nothing else is a serious loss. So long as you have that, you are never, ever, ever going to be in a state where you need to be depressed. La tahinu wa la tahsinu. So, so beautiful. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us a people who don't feel overwhelmed when facing, facing failure. And may Allah Azza wa Jal make us a people who can always stay away from, you know, this, the, the shadow, the, the, the casting shadow of sadness that can take away all of the good, all of the positive that we have in our lives. Depression usually comes from being far from Allah. Anyone who's in love and you take them away from their loved one, what happens to them? You feel distant. You feel sorrow. Our souls, their nature is that they want Allah. They need the remembrance of Allah. You know, the body consists of flesh and bone and muscle and blood. But there's two parts to the body. There's the physical sense and there's the spiritual sense. And the physical, we know what it needs. It needs exercise, it needs a good heart, it needs good food, it needs nutrition, it needs all of these things to have a good, healthy body. But what does the soul need? That soul needs Allah. And when that soul is taken away from Allah, it doesn't remember Allah, it's, 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 it's never in a good environment. <laughs> it becomes depressed. It becomes lonely. It yearns for Allah. It yearns for its creator. We need these environments. We need to be around good people. And when I say good people, you know, many of us have this habit. Oh, mashallah, you know, I have very, very good friends. They don't swear and they don't steal and they don't do anything wrong. They don't break the law. So these are good people. No, this, this is not, again, wallahi, we've become so shallow. Good people means people that remember Allah, people that talk about Allah, people who don't sit there backbiting and slandering and slamming and my opinion and your opinion and these people and that people and and people who when I'm sitting with them, you know, I feel like I'm getting closer to Allah. I leave the gathering, I feel depressed, I want to go back there again. These are good people, people who pray, people who, who, who really have genuine fear of Allah. These are good people, so you need these people in your environment. The human being is a social creation, it's a social being. We are not loners, you know, this this concept of, oh, I just want to be alone, this is wrong, corruption. We are social beings, we are social creatures. And you will always be a product of your surrounding. So we need to be around good people. And then you have to realize everything that's happening is from Allah. 
you know, you don't get depressed. If you forget about Allah, you end up getting depressed. You think things are black and they're gloomy and do no, we don't believe this. We believe in happy endings. No matter how bleak it looks out there, it's dunya. You're in the lowest. Dunya means the lowest place. A dunya. We're on the bottom. There's only up from here. Really, there's only up. This place, wallahi, all of you, I'll give you sincere advice and myself. This place is designed to break your heart. It was designed that way. If you're looking to be happy in the dunya, you're in the wrong place. Trials and tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are not just the calamities that strike us in terms of death, in terms of loss of wealth. But there are also blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us that we don't thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. And we don't use them in their appropriate means. If you are not being tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you do not see that test, then now is the time to realize that you're either being tested by pain or you're being tested by pleasure. They both need the exact same result. You turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who is being tested by pain, he seeks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help and finds a recourse out. The one who is being tested by pleasure, he thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those blessings and he uses those blessings to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many wealthy people do you know that have a lot of wealth, who have children that are in tribulation, who have sons that are completely wayward or really look out there. People are in tribulation. You think you're looking at him because he has a big house. He has nice Mercedes. He, if you were in his shoes, you might say, I want to be back in my old shoes, even though they have holes in them. Because at least I can sleep at night. In his shoes, I have to take all these pills to go to sleep. When it comes to tests and trials from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have one of two choices. You can either deal with the pain right now and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or you can delay dealing with the pain, seeking the pity of others, seeking help from others, and prolonging the pain without any recourse. And it's very important to understand the cycles that individuals go through when they go through pain. When they lose someone that they love, when they feel betrayed by another individual, the very first reaction they have is to isolate themselves. They want to be alone. Now this is more significant when it comes to men. Because men naturally like to deal with their own pain. They don't like to speak about it. Women naturally like to speak about their pain and suffering. And that's why their first reaction is going on the phone, going to see their mothers, going to see their friends. However, when it comes to true pain, at one time or another, you will try to isolate yourself. And this is the first thing you need to recognize that this is not what you want to do. This is not a natural reaction, but rather it is shaitan telling you that you will feel better when you're alone because you're the only one that understands what you're going through. It is a deception from shaitan. So while you may need to be alone for a little while, prolonged isolation is very harmful and detrimental to your situation. What you want to do at that time is that short period of time, once you've gotten over that initial rage, that initial pain, then after that you need to get around the believers. You need to get around people who are going to remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what every individual who's going through pain and suffering needs to realize. That this point of pain and suffering is not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to punish you, but rather this is a calling from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh my slave, come back to your Lord. Oh my slave, this is a reminder for you that I want to bring you back to me. And this is one of the wisdoms of trials and tribulations. That while we call each other on the phone, while we text message each other, the calling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes through trials and tribulations. And you can react one of two ways. Either you can deal with the pain at that moment and decide to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or you can decide to just restrict that pain to yourself, not do anything about it. And then you'll see what it does to your deen. And this is the last stage of the cycle of isolation. That once you're isolated, you will see that eventually your deen starts to disappear. The content of your salah, the khushu in your salah, it disappears. Your ability to recite the Quran is no longer there. 
your ability to fast during the day, it gets taken away. What did you do differently? What you did differently was you gave yourself into shaitan. And shaitan's promise is that he will lead you astray. He will lead you away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in times of trials and tribulation, you need to seek out the believers. You need to seek out the righteous and let them be your guide and help to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Trials and tribulations are a means of purification. They are a means of purifying you so you can go to the purest of places. The punishment of Allah is not out of anger and wrath. The punishment of Allah is a means of cleansing you of your sins. The punishment of Allah is a preparation that you can go into noblest and purest of places. Al-Firdaus Al-A'la And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends trials and tribulations. And that's why Ibn Abbas anhu said that in every niqma there are three ni'ma. In every tribulation there are three blessings. And the first one is that it could be worse than it is. That it's in your worldly matters and not in your deen. Like if you lose money, is money. But if you lose deen, you lost everything. So that's a ni'mah. If it's, لا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا. I mean, if you think about it, he didn't say, لا تصبنا. Do you see the dua? He didn't say, لا تصبنا يا Allah. Don't give us any calamities. He said, لا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا. Don't give us tribulation in our deen. We're going to get tribulation. And we know that. Because that's the nature of dunya. So you're going to get tribulation. But don't make it in deen. Make it in dunya. So that's a ni'mah. You lost your job. Alhamdulillah, I didn't miss my prayers. Alhamdulillah, I, I didn't lose my iman. Alhamdulillah, there's wudu and a place to pray. Because jobs come and go. But deen, once it's gone, Allahu alam if you'll ever get it back. And then the final one, it's in this world, it's fid dunya wa la fil akhirah. As long as the musibah is in this world, it's a ni'mah. Because the real musibah is the musibah in the next world. So if you look at that and realize we're in blessing, wallahi, the whole lot of us. Some may be more than others outwardly, more observable, but the whole ummah is in blessing, wallahi. On them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. Don't get stressed out, Muslims, over things that haven't happened yet. That's fear. And don't get stressed out over things that's already happened. Everything has been decreed. The most difficult pill for the Muslims to swallow is article number six of our deen, the qadr of Allah. We don't want to admit it. We forget about the power of Allah. We forget about the presence of Allah. We forget that we came from a clot and we were nothing. Muhammad Ibn Abdullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had to correct everything because we weren't doing anything right. And we get so afraid because we forget. We fear and we forget that Allah is in control. <laughs>